Tax Objective 7 Problems Problem 1. Three views of the same cube are pictured. Which is the correct net of this cube? Here's a simple way to approach this problem. Let's look at the order of the images on the cube that is provided and see if we can figure it out. These two views show a triangle pointing to the bottom of the big letter T. And which one of the unfolded nets in the answer choices also has the triangle tip pointing to the bottom of the T? We see it here in answer A. For further confirmation, let's look at the bottom of the base of the triangle. We see a big X at the base of the triangle. And where do we see the big X at the base of the triangle? We see it here in answer A. And notice that the net in answer B, when folded into a cube, will also have the X at the base of the triangle. However, in answer B, the triangle points to the star and not the bottom of the T as in the first two views of the cube shown. So we can cross off answer B and this confirms A is our correct answer. Most tax versions have a 3D conceptualizing problem that should be quite easy if you look at all the views and think logically. Problem 2. A designer made a replica of a kitchen table for a dollhouse. The actual table measures 9 feet by 2.5 feet and the table leg measures 27 inches high. If the dollhouse table leg is 1.8 inches high, what is the length of the tabletop? This is really just a proportion problem. In problems like this one, particularly where there are no pictures or drawings, I think it's a good idea to make one. Here's a kitchen table. Its length is 9 feet and the table length measures 27 inches. And then we have the replica table with a table length of table leg length of 1.8 inches and we need to find the length of the tabletop for the dollhouse replica. So this is really just a proportion problem. However, to set up a proportion, is there something we have to do first? We have mixed units. And by mixed units, I mean that most of the units are in inches and one dimension is given in feet. All the units are in inches except the table top length. We could change the dimensions to feet, but it's probably easier to change this 9 feet to inches. Converting to inches, what's 9 times 12? It's not too hard without a calculator, but since we have one, it's 108 inches with it. And the proportion setup is x over 1.8 equals 108 over 27. To solve for x, we cross multiply the 1.8 and so it becomes 1.8 times 108 divided by 27. And our answer is 7.2 inches. And that is answer D. After having drawn our picture, we could have eliminated choices A and B as they are not nearly proportional answers. Problem three, what are the coordinates of point L? If we understand the very basics of how coordinate planes are numbered, this is a very easy problem. We first need to remember that in a coordinate pair, the first number inside parentheses is the x value and the second number is the y value. To position the point L from the origin, we see that it's located three units to the right of the origin denoted by the blue line segment. So x equals 3. And to go the rest of the way to point L, we see that we must go down two units from the x-axis. And that means that the coordinates for point L are 3, comma, negative 2. And those coordinates are found in answer A, which we circle as our correct answer. Alternatively, we can go to our calculator and press STAT ENTER. We can enter the coordinate here under L1 and L2. From here, we can go to the Y equals key in the upper left of the keypad. We go up to plot 1 and activate it by pressing ENTER. Then press GRAPH, and here we see the point for answer A. We can even evaluate the point better if we go to our window settings and set the x min at negative 5, the x max at 5, the y min at negative 4, and the y max at 4. These settings match the graph given in the problem. And when we press graph, we see even better that our answer is A. Problem 4. Pablo plots his house and his best friend Raymond's house on a number line. If each unit on the number line represents 2 miles, how far apart do Pablo and Raymond live? This one looks pretty easy. If we count over left to right like this, we count 7, 
from Pablo's house to Raymond's house. And so, is that seven miles? Well, it would be seven miles except for this, underlined in blue. Each unit on the number line represents two miles. And so the distance would be seven times two, or 14 miles, and that means that D is our correct answer. When you see a problem like this one that looks really easy, read and examine it very carefully because there may be one or two additional details to possibly trip you up like this one, two miles for every unit. Also note that the answer seven was one of our choices. Every tax has in most of its problems one or more answers based on making a likely mistake. Be careful. Problem five, what is the slope of the line that passes through the points negative two comma four and negative nine comma one? There are a lot of ways to do this problem. The way we'll look at first involves the use of the slope formula from the tax formula chart and it's m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll let the first point be x1 comma y1 and the second point be x2 comma y2. And here's where the numbers go in the formula. And this is it with all the coordinates in place in the slope formula. And that's 1 minus 4 over negative 9 minus negative 2. Note that the numbers are inside parentheses. I like using parentheses in formulas because it makes it easier to avoid mistakes. And that simplifies to negative 3 over negative 7. Your basic integer arithmetic is very important here as in all levels of math and algebra, which further simplifies to 3 sevenths, which is this answer, and we circle D, the correct answer. Alternatively, we go to where we can plot points by pressing STAT, then ENTER. Then we place our points in place the X values under L1 and the Y values under L2. Now since we're finding the slope of a line, we find the equation of that line by pressing STAT, arrow once to the right to the CALC submenu, arrow down to 4 the linear regression option, press ENTER, press ENTER again. For the slope we get this number, 0.42857, etc., which is the decimal approximation of 3 sevenths, verifying our earlier answer. Problem 6. Alan has graphed an equation on a coordinate grid as shown. Which equation did he graph? We're trying to find out which one of these four equations matches the graphed line. Even though there are a lot of ways to do this problem, I like evaluating the form y equals mx plus b, which is the slope-intercept form of a linear equation found in our formula chart. Really, all we have to do for these equations is get these y's by themselves. Then we'll see the slope next to the x and the y-intercept as a number all by itself on the opposite side of the equation from y. We're looking for an equation with a slope or rise over run of 2 over 1, which equals 2. And we're looking for a y-intercept of negative 3. For this equation in A, if we solve for y by bringing this 2x across the equal sign, the equation becomes y equals negative 3 minus 2x. But that gives us a slope of negative 2, so we cross it off because we need a slope of positive 2. For answer B, we can solve for y by moving the negative y over to the other side of the equal sign. But we'll also have to move this 3 on the right side over to the left side of the equation. So the equation becomes 2x minus 3 equals y. And this one has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3, so B is our correct answer. But just to be sure, we check out our remaining answer C and D. C is wrong because its slope is negative 2. And for answer D, it's wrong because its y-intercept is 3 and not negative 3. We can also pull out our graphing calculator. The first thing I would do is go to the window setting and set the graphing window just like the dimensions of the graph x min of negative 5, x max of 5, y min of negative 5, and y max of 3. And then go to the y equals to enter answer A. First place the negative 3 on the right side of the equation. Then we subtract 2x to solve for y. Then press graph. We have the correct y-intercept but not the correct slope. Now to enter answer B, we start with an open parentheses. Now we enter the 3. Next we subtract 2x. Then we close parentheses, 
And finally, since we have negative y remaining on the left side of the equation, we divide by negative 1. Then press graph. We notice that it's the same equation on the graph, confirming that b is our correct answer. Problem 7. What is the area of the largest square in the model below? This problem tests your true understanding of the Pythagorean theorem. In the context of this problem, the area of this square, which we'll call a squared, plus the area of this square, which we'll call b squared, equals the area of this largest square across the diagonal between the two smaller squares, which we'll call c squared. So here we have 20 squared plus 21 squared for a squared plus b squared. We press enter. We get 841 square units for the area of the largest square. And we circle our correct answer, d. But here's where the test writer is trying to get you. If we take this value of 841 and take the square root of it, we get 29, which just happens to be answer A. But this is why you need to pay close attention to what is being asked. Are they asking for the length of the hypotenuse? No. They're asking for the area and not the length of one side of the square. Be careful. They're going to try to get you to make a mistake like this one. This has been Tax Objective 7 Problems. Thanks for viewing.